I was first prescribed metacopramide for long-term usage in 2013 and it wasn't taken off me until the end of 2018. The anti-sickness drugs were repeatedly prescribed by her GP without any appropriate checks. This was against the NHS advice that the drug should be prescribed for more than five days unless there were exceptional circumstances. My life has completely turned around. Eating is a problem, moving around is a problem, speaking to people becomes difficult, mobility is affected. Petra was first prescribed the metacroplamide in 2008 and then in 2013 a warning was issued by the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Authority to say that GPs should no longer issue repeat prescriptions. Sadly this wasn't the case for Petra. In total she was issued over 30 repeat prescriptions by five GPs. Uh, despite Petra returning to the GP on numerous occasions complaining about uh, blinking of the eyes or uh, jaw grimacing uh, or uncontrollable jaw movements, uh, vision disturbance and weakness to her feet, the GPs uh, continued to prescribe the metoclopamide without any checks and reviews and her concerns were dismissed as being anxiety. Petra was taking the metoclopamide for eight years in total. Uh, she received a diagnosis for a movement disorder, TARDIS dystonia dyskinesia. She has had a DBS device uh, fitted to her brain to control her facial movements and she is now wheelchair bound. She has had a few life threatening incidents where she, she has difficulty eating and swallowing which has resulted in her suffering with pneumonia and sepsis. I would say to anybody that is being currently prescribed metacopramide on a long-term basis and by that I mean anything exceeding five days or post-operative, question it. Go to your GPs Asimis is an alternative medication to that and what are the possible dangers of being on metacopramide long term. When I first spoke to Petra she was understandably upset, she was nervous about having to bring a claim and she was angry. Like most patients Petra put her trust into the medical professionals and she believed their advice and reassurances. This has sadly resulted in Petra being left with conditions which restrict almost every aspect of her life. It has had a devastating impact on Petra's life and her family life. Uh, this case raises serious questions around the issuing of repeat prescriptions and the and ensuring the welfare of patients is not put at risk by the failure to properly listen to patients and the uh, failure to carry out checks uh, when issuing repeat medications. When I first spoke to Petra, she told me that when she received her diagnosis, she went back to her GPs and spoke to one particular GP and said that she was thinking about taking legal action. She was mocked by that GP and pretty much told to do her best and that she wouldn't get anywhere with it. Petra was brave and courageous and brought the claim and after a long drawn out process largely due to the defendant failing to respond to our allegations of negligence we ended up issuing court proceedings. We went down the court route and were preparing for trial when uh, a joint settlement meeting took place and settlement negotiations took place and I am pleased to say that the case settled for a significant amount of money. 
Petra won her case and is now able to use the compensation money to uh, find better alternative accommodation, which will suit her needs. Uh, she will be able to use uh, the money to fund private carers and private therapies and she will also be able to purchase specialist aids and equipment which will suit her needs. The way I would describe how I felt I was treated by the GPs was one of disdain, someone to not be respected or thought about or considered, in general just as all disregarded. To sum it up, I would say it was disregarded. It's important to get Petra's message out there to those who are taking the metoclopramide drug and to those who are receiving repeat prescriptions without any appropriate checks and reviews. If something feels wrong or you have concerns, then you must speak to your medical professional and you must continue to go back to them until your concerns are heard. Fortunately, the GPs were not willing to listen to Petra's concerns, but we were able to make sure that Petra's voice was heard. Now, she is bravely sharing her story in the hope that anybody else going through this same or similar situation will not feel like they are alone like Petra did. Often, it is too easy for people to access repeat prescriptions without the appropriate checks and reviews. This could potentially lead to more devastating cases like Petra's. We very much echo Petra's message that if something doesn't feel right, then you should seek medical advice. And we would urge people to seek support if they feel that there has been substandard medical care. Fighting for my independence is the biggest challenge for me. I need to remain independent for as long as I possibly can. If you feel that you have experienced substandard medical care, then please feel free to contact me so that we can discuss your concerns.